Hi, Max from Unique. Um, we're going to show you how to change an ESC on the Q500, Q500 Plus, Q500 4K, and the Q500 G models. So what you're going to need is a set of tools. You're going to need a soldering iron and a Phillips screwdriver, as well as, well as an ESC given to you in the package that looks just like this. It's a YNQ 500 uh, 113F if it's a front, B if it's a rear, and SVC for service center. So let's get started. All right, so here we have our motor. Um, this is a B. It doesn't matter if it's A or B. All we need to do is uh, change the ESC. Um, so what, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it over. And here we have the light cover. The light cover, you use a uh, Phillips screwdriver or screwdriver bit, um, a small one. And in our case, we have a tool to, to uh, take these out. Just pop that in, go over, make sure you're centered in the screw. Go ahead, pull these out. Make sure they're out all the way. And then you should be able to just squeeze the, uh, the cover and pull it right off like that. Um, personally, I like to disconnect this cable right here, right in the beginning. That way, it's very simple when it comes to pulling everything else out. Just pop that out, pops out like that, put it aside. All right, so now that we have the ESC taken apart and uncovered, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our Phillips screwdriver and pry up the ESC from the standoffs that are holding it away from the motor and away from the light. So here you have the ESC and this is when you can check to see all the MOSFETs because there are six. There's three on one side and three on the other. And as you can see, each, each color of these wires corresponds to a different um, a different pad. You have A is red, B is blue, and C is black. Uh, if you switch two of these, it will reverse the motor. So make sure that you get that that um, pattern correct. So now we can go ahead and disconnect our signal wire, pull that out to the side, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and heat up our soldering iron. All right, so now that we have our soldering iron and lead-free solder ready to go, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to tin the tip a little bit, get some of that solder on there, because when you're soldering, the name of the game is heat transfer. So now that we have a, a little bit of solder on here, we can sync the ESC up. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to apply the soldering tip to the ESC wire. We're going to heat it up, and then we're going to pull the wire out and you want to be a little quick because if you wait too long it'll cool down too fast for you to be able to pull it out so you're gonna have to do it real quick so once you see it flow and pop that's when you should be able to pull it out see I wasn't fast enough there I'm gonna try it again heat it up pull it out so it should look like that when you pull it out so just repeat the step to the other two wires See, I got it about halfway out on that one. And now we got to heat it up just enough. So you don't want to overheat these because they will heat up the entire board and you can pop off FETs that way. So we're going to heat this one up just, just like the other two. Wait for it to move. See, now it's flowing. Pull it through. Do it one more time. And we should be able to get it out. So now you've got your ESC without your three wires, but you still have two more wires. These are the main power wires that go to the main, the main flight control board. So we're going to go ahead, warm these up, just like the other ones. You don't want to heat them up too much, but these are a lot easier since they're not in holes. So once it heats up enough, it'll pop right off just like that. Heat up the second one, pop off. So what you, the other thing you want to do is try to make sure that you don't touch any of these edges. Uh, if you melt these edges, you're going to have to replace the entire uh, frame. Alright, so now that you have the old ESC pulled out, what we're going to do is we're going to pull out the new one. And the first thing we have to do is desolder these two power wires that are right here. So we're going to put this ESC down, 
We're gonna grab some more, some more solder, tin it a little bit. That way we get that maximum heat transfer we can get. Go in, heat it up, pop it right off. Now we're gonna go into the negative, go in, heat it up, pop it right off. Should be that simple. It should be fairly, uh, fairly painless. Um, and remember, these these irons are hot, so you don't want to burn yourself. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the exact opposite. We're just going to connect it. So we're gonna heat it up, put it on, and when you're when you're soldering, you don't want to move it after the solder has uh, flowed. So right here we have it in position already. All we're gonna do is put the iron on it, heat it up, let that heat flow it, and now we have a good solder joint. So now that we have these two set up, we can uh, go ahead and start arranging how we're going to put this ESC in. Um, so we have A, B, and C. A being red. So sometimes these cables, when you put them in, they're going to be a little too fat. Uh, what we recommend is using some diagonal side cutters. Just grab it, grab the dike, and snip make it look more like a spear or a cone like a conical end right there makes it a little easier to get it in so here you have one one sitting through the brand new holes brand new ESC's don't have solder here either so that makes it really nice so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our solder along with our iron we're gonna put some solder on the iron to transfer some of that heat and then we're gonna keep adding solder until the entire pad is filled on all sides. So right there, so when it's flowing, it should be shiny like that. So if I were to reheat it, you can see that the entire thing is flowing, which means that there's gonna be good contact, and then it's, it doles up as it cools down. Now I like my irons hot. I like to run them at 900 Fahrenheit or 480 Celsius, somewhere around there. Um, so the red is A, and then B is going to be blue, but just like the other one, this one's going to be too thick. So we're going to have to go ahead and snip this. Drop that. So this one needs two snips because it's still too wide in another dimension. So it doesn't matter too much if you make it a little skinny, but you still want it to have enough meat so that it doesn't it doesn't have too much of an issue. So get that on as far as you can. Try to keep the insulation flush with the pad that way there's no possibility of a short while someone's flying this so you have your ESC sitting there with the second wire in you're gonna go ahead and do the same thing as you did with it with a with B so you're just gonna heat it up transfer that heat over help it flow hold it so that it doesn't move and then watch it cool down so that's, that's gonna be a really strong solder joint all right, so the third one is gonna be black, see? So that one, just a hair, just a hair wide, so we are gonna snip this one as well. Um, and if you're fast enough, when you pull these out, there's a possibility that you don't even need to sh make these smaller. They will just be straight, and they will fit the first time. So, here we have C, we're just gonna heat it up. This is about the speed that you should be doing this. Realistically, you just heat up the entire pad and wait for it to cool. Now we have good solder joints on all three, A, B, and C. And now the last couple steps are gonna be to reinstall the signal cable. Signal cable is this one right here with the three, three wires. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and situate this so that none of the wires are pinching. You wanna have the ESC oriented um, in such a way that the signal cable is closest to the channel that it's coming through in the arm. So we're going to go ahead and drop this down. Alright, so now it's in place, held by friction. Um, we're going to double check. Uh, see the motor, the way you can tell if any of your channels are touching is you'll feel resistance in the first, if you have two um, solder or bridge together or shorted out um, you'll have even more resistance if three of them are shorted out so when you get a brand new copter get used to that feeling of a free motor without having any resistance because once you have resistance that's a good signal that's a good uh, indication that you're gonna have a short 
so now that you have this um, pretty much ready to go back together uh, what I like to do is I take this little this uh, micro molex or whatever it is go ahead and get bend it like 90 degrees or a little farther use my fingernail to hold it while I align the plug there's a plug inside the cap here you can barely see it right in here on the other side of the board so what we, we're gonna try to do is we basically just insert the tip push it push it right in and it should be that simple um, so now that you have that set up you can align it um, you want to make sure that this wire doesn't get in the way of any of these screws if it were to you would lose uh, electricity on this ESC um, but yeah you just want to just avoid that so go ahead line it up grab all four screws if it's a test fit and if you just need to test it you can put two but it's rec we recommend that you always put four that way you don't have to go back and fix it if you uh, happen to uh, have it fixed so we just can go ahead tighten these back down and that's how you change an ESC